Hi ladies, it's Marie. Um, today is such a timely, timely, timely topic of, um, you know, the perfect magic of the holiday season usually falls on women to silently do all the work. <laughs> and also how we have these per perfect holiday, magical holiday expectations in our head that really put undue pressure on us. Um, I was reading this article uh, this week and um, used the word emotional labor. And I just thought that was, I've never heard that before. Um, and the emotional labor that we put on ourselves is something that women are really, really good at um, in how we really suffer um, <laughs> uh, quietly in the background, making things happen as the puppet master. Um, making things happen, saying, I'm fine, I got it. And then, you know, being up until two in the morning, um, making things happen behind the scenes so it doesn't fall on anybody else. Uh, really just the pressure of the holiday season and making everything, fitting everything in and getting everything done and pre-planning and shopping and cooking and grocery shopping and decorating and all of the things that are on our to-do list that um, we just quietly do and don't really ask for help. Um, I used to always wonder how my mother did it. She had five kids. They were all a year apart. I'm three years younger than my brother uh, as the youngest. And, um, you know, we wake up in the morning and, and everything would be decorated. And um, we do some of the decoration with her the night before, but like she would be up so late and I never understood that until now as a mom and as a single mom, um, that the very little, I'm a night owl too. So very little of what you can get done in the day hours happen in the night hours after your daughter is in bed. So there's just so much pressure, um, during this time to just get things done when it's supposed to be this time of joy and connection. And even that saying, oh, it's supposed to be this time of joy. It puts pressure on us, right? It's supposed to be joyful. Damn it. Like the, that movie with Chevy Chase. And you're going to, you're going to have fun. Damn it. Um, and so often the expectation doesn't, we don't meet the expectations we have in our head because we have this perfection moment in our head. We have the perfection of what the cookie plate looks like or the dinner or the tree or the decorations or the house, whatever it is. And so just to show you how unbelievably real I am <laughs> um, is that, uh, so last night, um, I think I mentioned that I, I believe I broke my toe last week. Um, and so I haven't been able to be as efficient as I normally am and get around as fast and all of that. Um, and then also I had two clients move up an announcement, um, that was supposed to happen. Uh, one client move up an announcement that was supposed to happen like January that all of a sudden we're doing in three days. Um, and it was pretty big and, um, took a lot of work. So everything just got thrown up in the air. I'd broken my toe, this or that. So yesterday I was so damn efficient and got so much done and just like plowed through and everything was done around five or six. And I had already gotten, um, whole foods, like takeout stuff so that I didn't have to cook because I knew it was going to be a crazy day. And so I told my daughter that, um, you know, like I'll be done like five 30 cause I work out of the home and then we'll decorate and we'll watch a movie and we'll decorate the house. Cause I had all the boxes down and they've been sitting there for a couple of days. Cause I haven't had time. She's like, great. So I finish and I go out there and, um, she is there. We had, I picked her up from school earlier. It was raining, you know, and boxes are everywhere and her rain boots are on the, on the floor. And, um, we start decorating, we put on sound of music, which is our tradition to decorate to sound of music. And we start smelling dog poop. And, um, I'm looking at my dog who every once in a while does poop in the house when it's raining outside because he's a wuss and <laughs> doesn't want to go out through the doggy door and poop. And we're smelling it, but we don't see it anywhere. And so I said, Adley, can you please take your rain boots and get them out of the living room? We got so much going on. So she puts them on to be funny and she starts stomping through the house. And all of a sudden I realize that poop is on her rain boots and that's where the smell is coming from. And she has now stomped poop all over the house. I've got all these Christmas boxes. It's raining outside. You got the movie on 
And she starts freaking out, like, get it off, get it off. And I'm trying to get her boots off and also clean up. And she's like, I feel like I'm going to throw up. And her prepubescent emotional self is totally overreacting to everything. And I'm like, I need some help. Like, grab the wipes and, you know, <laughs> all of a sudden, like, total chaos. She's in total meltdown. I have poop literally everywhere in the front of my house, down my hallway, in the front bathroom. And I'm just like, how did this happen? This was supposed to be this like fun night. Work is over. We're supposed to decorate. Sound of music is on. All the Christmas lights are up. Oh my God. I was just literally, I lost my mind. She lost her mind. She was like, why are you yelling? I'm like, I'm not yelling. I'm asking you to stop walking around and stop getting poop everywhere. So anyways, I'm telling you this story because even the best laid plans of like, I've done my work. I'm now going to enjoy, and this is going to be great. And we're going to, she's 10 now. So she's really going to help me, uh, unlike years before. And now we have a situation where I have poop everywhere. The dog is hiding because he thinks he's in trouble, even though he didn't, he wasn't the one who pooped. It was from her walk home. The dog is hiding Christmas boxes everywhere and poop absolutely everywhere. <laughs> And my daughter in a total meltdown in her room with now her socks. And I'm left to, of course, clean up the mess. And so honestly, I just started laughing. And I was like, so, you know, of course, I got on my hands and knees and cleaned up everything and overdid it because I was so grossed out and done this massive job of cleaning and, um, and still need to decorate because I want to enjoy it this weekend with family and friends. And, um, and tonight was my night to decorate. And so I just literally was like, okay, reboot, 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 reprogram. <laughs> and I, I sat out on the couch and I poured myself a big ass glass of wine and I turned on a different Christmas movie because she's still in her room, like processing how gross poop is. And I am like, okay, I, I got, I got work ahead of me. I'm going to make this work. I love decorating my house. I'm a huge Christmas freak. How can I reboot? Because I don't want this to be a to-do that I have to do. And right now it's now nine o'clock. My daughter's going to go to sleep late, um, which means she's going to wake up in the morning emotional because when she doesn't get enough sleep, whatever, like instead of going down that rabbit hole, I was just like reboot pour myself a glass of wine, watch a different Christmas movie that, cause she wanted to watch the rest of Sound of Music with me tomorrow. Take a deep breath and just look around my house. Hi, Katie. Um, just look around my house and just, just start, just take a step at a time and sip your wine and enjoy, um, watching while you were sleeping is what I was watching, which I love that movie with Sandra Bullock way back when, and just take it a step at a time and enjoy the process. And honestly, I was able to reboot my mood. And the older me, not the older me, the pre-me who had done this work, honestly would have gone down a rabbit hole and literally just like, what is it about this Christmas? So much is going wrong. I've had to cancel this party. I broke my toe. Like this happened. Like I wouldn't put meaning to all of those things as if it meant that I was cursed this Christmas and wrote off the Christmas in my head because the old me did that. And let's be honest, you guys, how many times does some one thing happen and we kind of take it four steps further? It's like, what is it about this? Like, see, um, you know, I never have any help and there's too much to do. And you just start putting meaning on one thing and make it mean everything and these black and white thinking, you know, it, during the Christmas time, we do that to ourselves in droves because we're watching Facebook and we're watching, you know, Instagram and Pinterest and everyone is doing everything, looks like they're doing everything perfectly and is so happy and glamorous and, you know, making everything look so easy. And yet there is work behind all this stuff and it usually falls on the women. So needless to say, this woman here who um, is you know, has a Facebook group uh, and coaches women to get out of crazy busy was up until two o'clock in the morning last night doing my Christmas uh, decorations so that I could wake up this morning and have everything done and enjoy the holidays. And I drank, I will be honest, a glass and a half of wine doing it. And um, I actually enjoyed myself. It didn't feel like once I started and stopped the overwhelm, it didn't feel overwhelming. It actually was nice to do it with myself with my movie on and then I turned on some Christmas music and just have some time and just 
look at my decorations and put them out and redo things, which you can see some behind because I decorate every room because I'm a Christmas freak. And I woke up this morning feeling a sense of accomplishment and like new day, new start, reboot. And so like part of this Christmas magic is really like we have these ideas about perfection of what we want the Christmas season to look like. And then things happen like poop all over your house and or having to cancel a party or um, that you really love or, you know, things not working out the way you had it in your mind. And we can put meaning on that and ruin it for ourselves when nobody is expecting that except us. Or we can say, okay, well, that happened and process it. You know, if it's canceling the party, I had to process the disappointment of that. But then I got through it and looked at like why that was happening and how that was a good thing too. And that this is going to give me more time actually to decorate. And it's going to give me more time to enjoy the holidays without just cleaning and prepping for a party and cooking for a party. And I'll have it next year. And so like, I just really want you guys to slow down and just look at those moments where we start to feel the massive overwhelm of the holidays and reboot, maybe with a glass of wine, maybe just take a walk around the block, maybe go to yoga class, maybe take a deep breath. Um, and just remind yourself that it doesn't have to look perfect. It doesn't have to get done. Um, it can be done in a different way, like just regroup and refresh your brain so that you can tap into what really matters, which is what the holiday season is supposed to be about is joy. And it's supposed to be about connecting with family and friends and enjoying time together. And so don't be so caught up in the, what it's supposed to look like and what, how, um, the house is supposed to look like the Christmas dinner, the perfect gift, all this perfectionism like leans in, in the holiday season. And we need to recognize that that is not what it's about now, easier said than done. And I totally get that. So I'm going to give you some tips on how to maybe do that because it doesn't come naturally. And God knows I was challenged last night and I had to use my own skills and the old me would have spiraled down and just been like, screw it, you know? Um, I'll figure it out or whatever, or just gutted through and made that decorating until two o'clock in the morning be this chore and uh, the whole time contracted energy versus like taking a moment. Now, granted, taking that half an hour to just kind of reboot let, made me stay up later, but it was worth it because I stayed up later with higher energy and a better mood and enjoyed it. So sometimes we have to delay what we imagine is going to happen and, and just take a friggin' break to reset because things go down. So here's some tips really honestly about the holidays that we need to stop doing. And first I just need to tap into what we're doing and then I'm going to give you some tips. So honestly, like how many of you take on all the responsibility as women for the decorating, the cooking, the finding the perfect gift, the getting out the Christmas cards? Um, how many of you do that? Okay. So I bet a lot of you do, and mostly that does fall to women, and we silently do it behind the scenes, and we say things like, I'm fine, and I got it, and then when we're doing it alone at two in the morning, um, hi, Kathleen, um, when we do it alone at two in the morning, you know what we're doing? We're resenting. We're contracted, like I said, we're burned out, we're exhausted, we're a little bitter. Um, we're like, why do I always have to do these things? Why doesn't anybody ever help me? We're feeling um, comparison stuff to the next door neighbor's house. We just put all this junk on ourselves that make it harder for us to tap into the positive energy of the season. And so what I want to tell you is stop beating yourself up. Stop asking for perfectionism of things that you have in your mind and just go to joy, which sounds easy, but it's not in these moments. But like, this is supposed to be fun. This is supposed to be joyful. So let's tap back into that and step away. So, you know, like simplify, delegate, redo, do it a different way. Ask for friggin' help. Because the reason that you feel like nobody sees you and the reason you feel maybe underappreciated or silently suffering or the emotional labor of everything, all those are heavy words that women take on as we, as we gut through and make things happen as women can do better than anybody else in this world. But what happens is we're disconnecting from people in our lives. And this year, because I broke my toe or definitely hurt it where I can't 
put on shoes and do the normal stuff that I did, um, I had to ask for more help than I usually do. And um, I called on one brother-in-law and another brother and um, my nephew and to help me lift some stuff and get some stuff in and out of the attic. And you know what? They were happy to do it and they were helpful. And they're like, why don't you ask for help more? And I don't ask for help more because I feel like I'm burdening people and people love to help people, especially people who love you. So like how many times when somebody asks you to help, how good you feel when you're able to do these little things that mean so much. Like I was so grateful for that help the last three days because I needed to get some stuff done and I really wanted to decorate because it makes me so happy and I feel like it's a shorter Christmas season. So I really want to start this weekend enjoying Christmas um, and the holidays. So asking for help helps us connect with people because when we're struggling alone and silently alone at two in the morning or whatever, um, we do feel alone. We do feel underappreciated. We do feel unseen. And there are so many people out there, including if you have a husband or a partner or a friend or a sister, um, a brother that really want to help you. And it's more fun too. And so honestly, I don't know why as crazy busy women, I can't make sense of it, but we feel like asking for help is a sign of weakness. We do. Um, I deal with this all the time on my coaching calls. I certainly feel felt that way before. I don't feel it as much anymore, but some areas it still comes back in my life. Like we should be able to do it. I don't want to burden people. They've got a lot going on. Well, so do you. So why aren't you important? And it makes people feel good. And we're connecting with people in meaningful times. Like I remember my brother came over a couple years ago because I asked him for help. We had such a good time while he was helping me. We were laughing and I was catching up with him because things get busy and we don't get a chance to catch up. And if I didn't have that moment, we wouldn't have caught up and I wouldn't know some things that were happening with him and his job. Um, so asking for help builds a connection with somebody and we can't have connection without being vulnerable. I mean, Brene Brown, my, my idol, vulnerability is the path to connection. And when we are crazy busy and we have a head down and we're just doing, 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 I got it, I got it, I'm fine, I'm fine. We are disconnecting from the very thing that we want, which is connection and being seen and emotional support. We, when we gut through and handle everything that we're so damn good at handling everything by ourselves and so used to it, it's become motor skills. We're not allowing people in our lives to help us or love us because so many people show love through acts of service. And we're not allowing them. We're robbing ourselves of that. And then we get to the point of exhaustion where, yeah, the house looks beautiful. The dinner looks beautiful. The gifts are perfect. And we're not even physically present anymore because we're so effing exhausted from the effort it took quietly behind the scenes, suffering silently to make all of this happen. And then we're like, see? And nobody's like, wow, it's amazing. I can't believe everything you did because you never make it look like it's a lot. You never ask for help. And so it's a triple whammy of disconnection. Hi, disconnection, because we're doing it all ourselves. So we're not allowing other people and enjoying doing things together and connecting with people and showing people how much effort it takes to pull all this stuff off so that then they appreciate it when they see the end result. We're also quietly suffering. So then when we actually get to the moment where everybody's opening up those perfect gifts or doing whatever that, um, we're not even physically present. We're just this shell of a being who's freaking exhausted and can't wait for Christmas to get over because good God, it's exhausting. And it's my favorite time of year. I love Christmas. And I have to constantly remind myself I have to find different ways to do it because it's not all on me. And it's not about all the stuff that I think it is about. And I am a recovering perfectionist who loves Christmas and who loves to entertain. And those are that that is a wicked combination that just kind of haunts me sometimes. So I have to remember why are people really coming over my house to see everybody and to enjoy each other's time? How can I delegate and still have that result? Um, and this year, you know, honestly, I love decorating every bit of my house. But since I'm not having my big party, I literally was going to go outside because it stopped raining last night about midnight because I'm crazy and decorate my backyard. And I realized like, I just took a moment and I was like, yeah, the reason I'm decorating my inside of my house, even though I'm not having a party is because it brings me joy. But my backyard is, I'm not gonna be spending a lot of time in my backyard this season if I'm not having a party. So I'm just gonna put these two things out and no, I'm not decorating. Um, so that was a little win. 
Um, so I just had to remind myself, I do this for joy for me and when people come over the house and for my daughter, because I love the holiday season. I love Christmas decorations. I have a lot of them, but I was decorating the backyard for other people and I didn't need to do that. So just checking on why we're doing the things we're doing and asking for help. And okay, so here's my five big tips because I really want you to understand the cost of doing everything silently alone in the background keeps you isolated. I need you to understand that because I never understood the cause and effect of that. And I used to say all the time, like, how come nobody ever asks if I'm okay? How come nobody ever asks if I need help? Well, why would they even think of asking? Because I was making it look like I got it all handled. I got it. I'm making it happen. And I didn't ask for help ever. No, I got it. I got it. I got it. I got it. And guess what I did in order to get it? I would, in between conference calls, run out to the grocery store and do this instead of asking for somebody if they could pick up four things on their way home or on the way to the party. No, I had to do it. I had to do it. Everything had to be perfect when everybody walked in the door. For God's sakes, it doesn't need to be that way. And people enjoy helping and they enjoy bringing stuff. It doesn't have to be on you. So I really need you to understand that cost of doing things silently alone. It keeps you separate and, and it doesn't allow people to appreciate your effort because they're not freaking seeing it. Secondly, I want you to understand that everything you see on social media, besides this very authentic video that I'm giving you, I mean those social media posts that show that pretty picture with that perfect tree and the perfect decorations and the perfect family. And gosh, now they're like in my town because I live at the beach and we don't get snow. People are sand sledding. And, you know, I saw that this last weekend um, that people were sand sledding uh, so this family. And I was like, how fun. And oh my gosh, I don't think I do enough with my daughter. Like we should be doing more fun stuff. And then I ran into that. Um, and it was an awesome picture. And then I ran into that mom on the way to school the other day. And I'm like, oh my God, you look like you had the most amazing weekend. And that sand sledding looks so much fun. I need to do more stuff. And she goes, are you kidding me? She goes, that was a great picture, but that was the worst idea I've ever had. I had sand everywhere. Like my daughter melted down right after that picture. And she told me the reality of that moment. And I just started laughing and I just like, great reminder, great reminder. What I see on social media just makes me feel bad about myself sometimes <laughs> and immediately go to judgment. So, so much of what we see in the holiday season, these perfect houses, these perfect people, these perfect moments. I mean, I love that Hallmark channel, but then I, I have to stop watching some of those movies because it's like, oh, for God's sakes, like I got to remember reality. Like it's not real. It's not real. What is happening is everybody is trying to make things happen, doing their best and just wants to connect with people during this time of year. And what happens is we go straight to judgment about us. Like, why can't I pull that off? Why can't I figure that out? It seems so easy for everybody else. Some people really stress out throwing parties and it's like a massive stress moment. And so, and I love throwing parties and I actually don't think it's that hard to do because I love it so much and I kind of have it down and I love entertaining but when people see a party online, they're like, how do they do that? How do they figure that out? Because they're not a party person. Who cares? Who cares? Go to the party. Don't throw a party. Just see people during the holiday season or spend time with the three people you really want to spend time with and have a deep conversation with them out to dinner. So nobody's cooking. Just connect with people. So here are my tips as I talk and talk and talk about the stress of the holiday season is beyond you know, like check your expectations at the door because it never works out the way it's supposed to. Like me and my daughter uh, spreading poop around, my do dog poop around the house last night while we're trying to have this amazing holiday moment as we're decorating the house. Things don't work out the way that we think. That doesn't mean everything's not going to work out. It just means this moment is time to reboot, reset, and rejigger. Um, take a moment, take a breath take a break and then get yourself back through wine or self-care or to walk around the block. And then honestly, there is no such thing as perfect. So whatever you do is perfect right now. It's just perfect right now. Perfect right now because what your kids and family and friends and you are going to remember is the moments of joy, not the moment of how great the house looked. Okay. Um, and then lastly, don't believe 
social media posts as these perfect pictures because everybody's struggling on their own level and making things work and finding time to connect and all of that stuff. So here are my like four big tips for really kind of tapping into and controlling this crazy time and tapping into um, holiday magic and joy. Uh, first is self-care. It de the reality is this time of year adds more things to your to-do list and more things on your social calendar, which is awesome and fun. But like the shopping, the cooking, the cleaning, the decorating, all of this stuff becomes a chore, a to-do list, and it adds to your already busy, crazy to-do list. So self-care is important. This is going to be a crazy month. There's a lot going on that's fun and joyful and great. I don't want it all to feel like a heavy chore. So I need to make sure that I show up in my highest and best self. So I've got to make sure I'm sleeping. I've got to make sure I'm eating right. I've got to make sure I don't let workouts fall aside because I need that energy to show up because more is going on. So self-care, 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 whatever that is, taking a moment. Don't drop. What happens when we get overstretched? like the holiday season, is the first thing to go are the things that actually help us survive the most, which is self-care. So your morning routine, your meditation, your workouts, um, drinking lots of water, if you're going to be going out drink, you know, drinking wine or whatever, taking care of yourself cannot go off the list because everybody needs you, okay? And you need yourself and it's important. So taking care of yourself should be at the top of the list. Build in time for self-care. If you look at your week and you know because of all the holiday stuff and like me last night, two in the morning I decorated because it was the only day I could do it. I wanted to enjoy the weekend. So it was a conscious choice I was making and I tried to make the best of it. And I drank some wine and I turned on some great music and I made it happen. So conscious choice about what we're doing instead of chore and, and like heavy, oh God, I got to make this happen. I got to just gut through and decorate my house. I enjoy it. So make sure we go to the joy through self-care and reboots. The second is take a social media break. I know this sounds scary, but for the rest of the month, just take a social media break. And if you have to, if you don't want to, because it's how you connect with friends or whatever, then if you're on social media throughout the day, just catching up, just take a break from throughout the day and look at it in the morning or in the afternoon. Just look at it once or post something once and turn it off. Because what we tend to do, not only are we judging ourselves through other people's perfect lives, which is just a perfect photo, everybody can take a perfect photo once in their lifetime, is not only are we judging, but we're also falsely connecting with the people in our life. And like, I haven't seen Michael in two months, but I know exactly what he's up to because I've seen him on Instagram and he went to London and he did this. That is not connecting. That is just watching from afar. I'd rather see Michael. And so book a, book a dinner with Michael instead of following him on social media because that's not a real connection. It's not. It's not. So take a social media break or a diet, social media diet, because this time of year it can do, it, it's not good. And it's distracting you from connecting in real life. Ask for help or delegate or do less or don't do it all. So really like ask yourself, like I did last night in the backyard, who am I doing this for? Am I doing it for perfection because I want the whole house decorated? Am I doing it for other people? Does it bring me joy? No, it doesn't. Having the backyard without a party this year doesn't bring me joy because I'm not going to, I see it as I walk into my back door at night. Like I'll put a couple of poinsettias out, check because I'll see some holiday. I don't need to decorate my whole backyard. Like don't need to do it. So I'm not doing that this year. But that was a big win for me. Um, or do less or delegate and say, hey, I realize I don't, there's not a lot of weekends left before the holidays. How about um, I'm going to leave work early on Wednesday and go to my sister's house and cook some cookies because I don't have a weekend. And I'm going to make that choice and delegate and have some fun and connect and still get the cookies made. Like be creative and resourceful about how to get things done that are a priority to you or important to you or bring you joy by delegating or doing them with somebody else or doing them in a, in a simpler and quicker way. If you're just like putting so much pressure on yourself for holiday cards, do an e-card, send it out. I, somebody did this last year because they were just honest and be honest and everyone will love you for it because everyone's putting so much pressure on them. They were like, yeah, I had high hopes of getting out a holiday card with this beautiful picture. So here it is. And they sent an email to all of their friends and family. And it was so wonderful. And I still remember it. I don't remember the cards, the stack of cards that I got. I always love to look at them. 
but I don't remember. I remember that one because she was so honest and I was like, good for you. Um, so send an e-card or don't, or just go this year without sending a card. Nobody's going to die. Just do it. Um, and look at really what you're doing and why you're doing it is, are you doing it to keep up with the Joneses? Are you doing it? Cause it's something we always do. Are we doing it because it brings us joy or somebody in our family joy? Like there are certain things I'd love to cut off like that elf on the shelf thing. Um, but it brings my daughter joy. So I make it happen because that's important to me. And it's part of my values is to bring my daughter joy whenever I can. And so that damn elf on a shelf is in our lives. Otherwise it would be the first thing off of the to-do list. Um, and then finally step away from perfection, step away from it. It doesn't exist. We know this. It doesn't exist. It certainly doesn't exist in anybody's minds. Who's walking in your house or spending time with you, including the people that live in your house. They have not, if you ask, and it might be a fun thing to do is if you ask everybody in your family, what's your favorite Christmas tradition? I asked my daughter this cause we do a lot. What's your favorite Christmas tradition? She goes, the Christmas tree. Decorating the Christmas tree? No, I just like looking at it. So your favorite Christmas tradition is decorating the Christmas tree. It's not the cookie plates. It's not the gingerbread house thing. She likes all those things, but that's her favorite. And okay, like ask people because we're doing, we're throwing all these balls in the air to make everybody happy, make everybody have a perfect Christmas. Well, what about your perfect Christmas? First of all, it doesn't exist, but let's do a survey in our life and say with yourself first, what it brings me the most joy during the holiday season that is my favorite tradition, my favorite decoration, my favorite thing to do. Let's make sure we make time for that. Do we really need to do the other thing? You know, do we? Do we really need to do that? Or is it just something we just automatically do every year and now it's a to-do? So do a survey or just, you know, really stop thinking there is a formula for a perfect Christmas. I gotta be honest, for the rest of my life, I will remember last night and my daughter and I and the poop all over the house with the dog and us like at first kind of yelling at each other because she kept on walking and spreading the poop and then her having a meltdown and me going, stop it. And then we just both looked at each other and we started cracking up because it was just so awful. And we just started laughing. And I will remember that because I love how the two of us, when we get stressed the most, we go to laughter. And I love that about her. And she told that story on the way to school to three people. And we'll remember that. That is the furthest thing away from perfection you can get, but it's a memory. And that's what life is about. So here's my thing. Step away. So here's the thing. Self-care first. Take care of yourself first because you can't be there for anybody else if you don't. And that means really planning in self-care and not letting things fall off the list that actually help you maintain your mental health as well as, as well as your physical health. Don't take the workouts or anything else, the walks, the water, whatever you do to maintain health and mental health. Don't let it slip off the list because things are busy at this time of year. Two, take a social media break or social media diet because it messes with your brain, especially this time of year when you're feeling ex exhausted and tired and vulnerable because it's not real, okay? Uh, these social media pictures about people's lives and, oh, we're ho this holiday season and this and that. It's wonderful to see people and some of it's real, but we put judgment on ourselves or meaning to it. And it just is a wonderful photo. It doesn't mean anything about you. It has nothing to do with you. So if you're going to be on social media, just know that you're recognizing other people's lives. And isn't that a lovely photo? And let it end instead of putting some judgment on yourself or making it seem like you're lacking in some way. Um, but I would recommend a social media diet or a social media blast out for a month or the next couple weeks. And then ask for help, delegate, do less, or don't do it at all. And that means really checking yourself on why you are doing it. Is it for others or because you always have, or does it bring somebody you love or you joy? And then the last is there's no such thing as um, perfection or a perfect holiday season. And so step away from the desire for perfect everything and just do what matters and um, be joyful. And if things go down and like doesn't work out or you're feeling unbelievably stressed, do a reset. Just literally like step away from the Christmas tree, step away from the cooking and just take a breath and find something funny to do or take a walk around the block or um, just take a reset moment so you can get back into the moment because things will happen. Okay. <sighs> so that is it. That is my holiday magic um, advice.
Thank you guys for joining. Hi, Natalie. Um, and uh, have a wonderful holiday season. I'll be talking to you. I can't take a social media break because this is how I talk to you. And I don't want you to take so much of a break that you're not even listening to me anymore, but a diet um, because we can, that can be dangerous. So anyways, <sighs> happy holidays. Um, go enjoy the things that matter and um, de-stress with these tips. Bye.